Hey guys, welcome back. So today I'd like to take care of two things at once. I'm planning on moving the Sherline and possibly the old lathe to my garage and hopefully getting them CNC'd up and running again. And naturally I will be taking a few tools with me including the machinist hammer because everyone knows only a hammer can make that lathe run properly which means I will need to make up a replacement one. Now normally I wouldn't worry about filming this because I've already made a machinist hammer on the channel before but at the request of a few viewers I would like to explore the possibility of making the next one a dead blow hammer because the old one is simply just a solid steel head with some nylon and brass bolted to each end and as a result it can rebound or bounce back a little bit when I'm striking apart. Which is something that you don't really want when hammering apart. You really want all the force to go into the part in one hit. A good dead blow hammer should be able to reduce that by spreading the force of the strike over a larger period of time. At least in theory anyway. Plus I'd like a second shot at making a handle. You know a steel one was a nice idea at the time because it adds a good amount of weight to the hammer and that was really good when I was hammering in small confined spaces but it really does seem to throw off the overall weight balance of the hammer. What I will be keeping though is the removable ends. You know I think the combination of acetal and brass work really well together. The brass doesn't mar steel and nylon goes really well for hammering plastic and aluminium. And to my surprise the brass has held up really well. So to start off once again I'll be making the head from some steel. You know some of the designs that I saw use steel pipe but I couldn't get any in the right size so solid bar will have to do. I also have a piece of acetal and I'll use that to make the striking head. So what I'll do is I'll measure up a piece of steel and get it cut off. I can now get it in the lathe and get each end cleaned up. Now the design I'm going for will rely on the core being hollow with a bunch of weight in the centre. So the first thing I need to do is drill it out. I'll first go in with an 8mm drill and then I'll progressively make the hole larger. And finally I can switch over to a Deming bit, which I've recently reground. And that's the holes now bored out. It's not the nicest finish I've ever seen, but the drills take care of it way faster than if I was to try and bore it out with a boring bar. And for what it's worth, the finish in here doesn't need to be all that nice. However, I will need a boring bar to go in and make a step down in the end of the part. This will be for an end cap to hold all the weight in place. With one end now done, I'll flip it over and get a hole drilled and tapped for an M12 thread. Now 
Now I did think about swapping the design over to instead use studs on the hammer side, but if I did that, you'd only have a few millimeters of soft material between the workpiece and the steel threads. Now in practice, I'm not exactly sure if that would be an issue, but if it is, I would like to avoid it. And that's the part now done for the moment. Next I need to make a push cap for the end, which I can make from the same type of steel as I made the hammerhead. So I'll clean it up and then turn down the outside. And those are the heads parts now made. Now I did have to go back and make the counter bore a little bit deeper to accommodate the puck. Why didn't I make it deeper the first time round? Well mostly because I'm making the design up as I'm going along. If that wasn't already obvious. The next thing I need to make up is a way to hold the handle to the head. Because the last one was solid I was able to thread it in place. But I won't be able to do that this time. So after looking around for a little bit, what I found was a piece of steel tube which I can simply part off and then crush into a shape that somewhat resembles a handle. Alright, well that sticks, which I guess for my welding is the bare minimum. What I need now is a handle. And what I have is a choice of oak and that's about it. So what I'll do is I'll get a piece cut to length and then I'll try and whittle it down to shape. And I think this is the perfect job to break out the hand plane. Just needs a little bit of sharpening first. I'll then mark out the outline of the tube and get planing. Alright, and that should be good. I'll give it a quick sand with some 80 grit, call it a rustic finish, and call it there. But before I put everything together, I do need to decide on what exactly I'm going to use as the weight in the head. Now looking online, it seems that a lot of the cheaper ones simply use sand. But comparatively speaking, sand isn't all that dense, and I do want a little bit of mass in the head of the hammer. I think the more expensive designs use lead or steel shot, probably lead because it's more dense. But the only lead that I have is the lead that I've nicked off someone's roof. And whilst I could probably make them into balls, I think there is a better alternative. So what I eventually settled on was tungsten carbide, in the form of my broken inserts. I've been hoarding them for ages, hoping I'd find a use for them, and I think this works well here. 
You know, the crazy thing about tungsten carbide is it's about 40% denser than lead. You know, normally I don't notice because I'm only handling these tiny inserts, but even a small glass jar is enough to make you really notice just how dense this stuff is. So I think using it here would be a really good use for it. So what I'll do is I'll fill it about three quarters of the way up. For the dead blow hammer to work, it does need this extra bit of space. There needs to be a bit of space for the inserts to move around as to cause a delay when I strike the hammer and hopefully distribute the striking force over a longer period of time. Well, hopefully anyway, that is the theory. So with all that now in, I can get the cap started and then go over to the press and press it in place. Now that fit was a lot tighter than I was going for, so I think that should be able to hold by itself. Well maybe, I'll give it a go and see if it loosens up, and if it does, I can simply weld it in place, or just pin it. Next let's make the striking faces. Now my original plan was to tear apart an old DC motor, and get the copper wire out of it, and melt it down. This is the DC motor from the old mini lathe, and it's been sitting around doing nothing for years. Now I am sure that it has more than enough copper to make the striking faces, but as I pulled it apart, I realised that a lot of it was encased in glue and plastic. Obviously not a huge surprise, I mean I'd pulled this motor apart years ago, but I'd just forgotten how much glue and plastic I'd have to tear through to get all the copper wire out. And as much as I'd like to, I really didn't have all that much time to do this, so I had to switch over to plan B which was to use brass. And I mean, brass works well, and it's non-sparking like copper, it's just a little bit harder. Now, much like copper, I certainly don't have all that much brass on hand, and I certainly don't have any large enough to make the striking faces from. So what I'll have to do is melt some down and cast it in the correct size. Just fingers crossed though that I have enough. Now it looks like I'm a little bit short on material, so what I'll have to do here is put a thread in it, which I was hoping to avoid. Oh well, not much I can do. Now unfortunately there is a bit of porosity in the casting, but it was like that last time, and in practice it really isn't a huge issue. Alright, and now we can assemble it. And once assembled, it looked like that. Overall, I think it looked alright, but I think I was playing it a little bit safe, and it looked a bit like all the other tools that I'd made in the past. I don't know, just a little bit bland. 
So I went back and pulled it apart and gave the head a coating of cold blue and oil. It should give it some rust resistance, but I'm mainly doing this for the looks. And honestly, I think that looks so much better than it did before. Now I should have stopped whilst I was ahead because enthused by the new cold blue finish, I gave the handle the burnt finish. I've seen it done a few times in the past and I think on axes and other handles it looks really nice. But here, I don't know, it looks okay but I'm sure in the future I'll probably sand it back and take it back to its original oak finish. I mean I'm sure some people like it but it's just not for me. Most important thing though is how does this thing perform as a hammer and having used it I can certainly see what people are getting at when they talk about dead blow hammers. I mean there is certainly a lot less rebound and bounce back when using this hammer in direct comparison to the old machinist hammer. It's definitely noticeable but it's not out of this world you know mind blowing performance. End of the day they're both hammers and they both work well I just wish I'd made this one the first time round. All in all, pretty happy. And that's about it for now. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you very much for watching. It's great to be back. See you next week.